Hey guys, so today we're going to be creating a React application which uses Firebase for authentication. And this is what it's going to look like. So really simple UI, but it works really nicely. So we can say test at test.com as our email and one, two, three, four, five, six as our password. And we can hit sign up and this will then log us in and we can refresh the page and the state will be maintained and then we can log out. And we can say test at test.com again, one, two, three, four, five, six, and hit login. And then we'll be logged in. So this is the simple React application we're going to create using Firebase for authentication. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a React application, and we're going to use Create React App to do that. So we're going to say Create React App, and we're just going to call it My App. So that took a minute, but now it's finished. So we want to change into the directory of our application using CD my app. And now we want to install the one dependency we need, which is Firebase. So we're going to say npm install dash dash save Firebase. Now that that's installed, we can hit npm start to start our application. While that's starting, we're just going to look at our folder structure. So we have this source file where all of our code is going to go. And we want to create a new directory inside here. And we're just going to call it config. And inside this config directory, we want to create a new file called fire.js. And this is when where our Firebase configuration is going to go. If we head back to the terminal, we can see that our React application has now started. So we can go to localhost 3000, and we should see our application. Cool. So now we're going to go over to the Firebase console. If you don't have an account already with Firebase, you're going to have to sign up. Um, but when you go over to the console, you should see this then. And we want to create a new project. And we're just going to call it my new app. And accept the terms and conditions and click create project. Now that our project was created, we're going to hit continue. And we're going to go into the auth section. And we want to look at web setup. So here we can see we're given this configuration object and we want to copy this. And we're going to put this inside our fire.js file. At the top of this file, we also need to import Firebase, the module we just installed. And at the bottom, we want to initialize this application using a function called initialize app and we want to pass in our config and then we just want to export this and that's our configuration setup finished so now heading back over to firebase the console we want to click sign in method and we want to add email password. So we want to enable this. And just hit save. And that's all of our setup done. So now heading back over to React app, we want to create this login form and the sign up form. So to do that, we're going to create a new component. So again, inside the source directory, we're going to create a new, com a new file called login.js. And at the top, we need to import React. And we also want to import fire from the config file that we just created. And now we want to make our login class, which is going to extend react.component. So we have our render function, as usual with React components, and we're going to return some HTML or some JX, JSX. So I've just pasted in some JSX and it's just really simple. We have this div which is aligned to the center. We have this div containing the text email, another div containing the text password. And beside these we have two inputs, one for the email, one for the password. And then we have two buttons, one that says login and one that says sign up. And we have two on clicks for these, login and sign up. So we need to create those functions. 
So we're going to have login and we're also going to have sign up. Cool. And we're going to fill those in in a while. We also need to export this class. So we need to say export default login. So we can import this component in a parent component. Next, we're going to create another component called home. And this is the component that the user is going to be brought to whenever they're successfully logged in. So we're going to make a new file and we're going to call it home.js. And here again, it's going to be React. So we're just going to copy this for now and paste it in. And it's going to be called home. We don't need these functions. And we can take out this JSX and we want to export home. This time, we're just going to return a div. And inside this div, we're just going to have a heading. And it's just going to say, you are logged in. And we also need to have a button. says log out. And we're going to have a handler for this, which is going to be a function called log out. And we're going to create that function. And we fill it in in a minute as well. So now heading over to our app.js file, we are going to delete some of this boilerplate, which we had. Um, and we want to import our two components. So we're going to say import home from home.js and we want to import login as well. And if we get rid of all this code, then we're going to first of all just render the login component. If we hit save and head over to the browser, we can now see our login screen, but this isn't going to do anything yet. Um, as we haven't added our handlers. So now inside our app.js file, we're going to add our, our constructor function. And inside this function, we need to set up our state. We're going to have one state object called user. Uh, first of all, we need to call super with the props. And we're going to define our state. We're going to say this.state equals user, which is just going to be initialized to null. And we're going to set up a listener. We're going to say this dot auth listener equals this dot auth listener dot bind this. And this is going to be a function that we need to define. And that reminds me we need to import fire here as well, the same as we did here inside home. So let's import that. So we need to call this auth listener function as soon as the component mounts. So we're going to use our component did mount function. And we're going to call this dot auth listener. Now let's write this function. So we're going to call the fire dot auth dot on auth state changed, which will give us a user. And this is just a function provided by the Firebase SDK, um, which we are getting from here once we initialize this application. So this makes everything really nice and easy. So once the state changes, if we have a user, we want to set that user to the state. So we can say this.setState and just pass in user. And if there's no user, we want to say this dot set state user and set the state to null. And now we can use this inside our render function. So instead of just rendering the login component, we want to check whether the user is logged in or not. So we're going to say this dot state dot user. We're going to use a ternary operator. So if there is a user, we want to use the home component. And if there isn't a user, we want to render the login component. So if we save that, 
the last thing we need to do is write our logout function for when the user is logged in already and we need to also write the login and sign up functions but first of all we seem to be getting this error saying unexpected keyword this uh, what did i do wrong okay yeah so this needs to be wrapped inside a div And if we save that, the error should go away. And we can now see our login component. Cool. So now let's complete these last few functions. We're going to start off with login and sign up. So for login, we're going to need to get this email and password. So to do that, we're going to say const email equals document dot query selector and we're selecting the id of email because we've given this an id of email and we want to get the value of this and we'll do the same thing for password with an id of password and now we're going to use this email and password inside a function call we're going to say fire auth and again the Firebase SDK provides us with a useful function called sign in with email and password. And we pass in email and password. And this returns a promise. So we want to say dot then you, uh, which is the user. And we're just going to print out successfully logged in. And we're going to catch any errors. And we're just going to console.log error. And the error to a string so we can read it. Cool. So that's our login function. Now let's complete the sign up function, which is very similar. So we're going to copy and paste all of this. And instead of calling this function sign in with email and password, we're going to say create user with email and password. So our users can sign up. And we're just going to change the log to signed up. And print out the error again. Cool. So if we save this, we can see if it's working. So view developer developer tools. So we can see any errors if we get them. So we'll make this a bit bigger. So if we add an email, like 123.example.com and a password of 123, and hit sign up, we can see that we're getting an error and it says password should be at least six characters. So we'll add 456 and hit sign up. Uh, we'll hit login first and we can see there is no user record corresponding to this identifier so our errors are going to be are being handled really nicely and we should be displaying this text to the user as well um, but for now let's just hit sign up and we can see we're now logged in i have this logout button but it doesn't work yet so if we hit refresh you can see we should still be logged in which we are cool so let's implement this logout function so really simple, the Firebase SDK again provides with a function, which is fireauth.signout, which will sign out our user. If we hit save and go back to the browser, we should now be able to log out. So if we hit log out, this will log us back out. And we can now log in to make sure everything's working. And it is. So if we refresh, um, we should be logged in, which we are. And again, if we open this in another browser, we're still logged in. Uh, we can hit log out and it'll log us out everywhere. So the state of whether you're signed in or signed out is stored in the browser. So it survives page refreshes and even browser closes, which is really cool. And if we head back over to the Firebase console and hit users, you can now see that we can see this user which we signed up with and even when it was created uh, and a user ID.
So this is super cool. This video has been how to create a React application using Firebase authentication. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.